All right, so I wanted to take a minute to talk about the Trail of Tears and talk about just how big of an impact President Jackson had on future generations of Native Americans and policies the American government put toward Native Americans. So as you can see here, the Trail of Tears was when the Cherokee were forced off their land. Now, as you read in the previous slides, uh, the Indian Removal Act of 1830 was the law that forced them off their lands. The law went to the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Marshall said that Andrew Jackson could not force the Cherokee off their land because America had made a treaty with them promising them they could stay on that land. Jackson said, Chief Marshall has made his decision, now let's see him enforce it, ignored the Supreme Court's decision and forced the Cherokee people to march from Georgia to Oklahoma in the middle of winter with very little time to prepare. As you can see from the slide here, about 2,000 Cherokee died in camps while waiting to march, and another roughly 2,000 died along the way from diseases, starvation, and bad weather. If you look at these pictures, they do a really good job portraying the terrible conditions and the pain uh, that the Cherokee experienced along the trail. If you look closely right here, you'll see them burying um, a body. Now, they were able to bury bodies, but not very deep, and they weren't able to have proper funeral services or send-offs for those who died as the American soldiers forced the Cherokees to keep moving. Now, this would become a pattern. We'll look at this more closely next week, but this would become a pattern with American uh, government and Native American relations. They would make an agreement promising that the Native Americans would get to keep the land. Then, some important resource like gold, oil, um, would be found on the land and the American government would ignore the previous treaty, send soldiers to kick the Native Americans off their traditional land so that white Americans could settle there and reap the riches of those resources. And so this, the Indian Removal Act of 1830, really set a precedent for the next 60 years on how the American government dealt with Native Americans. Another thing to point out is that when Jackson ignored the Supreme Court decision, he was ignoring the principle of checks and balances in the Constitution, which we've talked about in class. Now, checks and balances is super important, and this is an example of why. If ignored, one person, the president, can have power to inflict a lot of pain and a lot of suffering on a subgroup, uh, such as the Cherokee, even when other branches don't agree with it. And so that's, that's an example of why the Constitution and why checks and balances are so important. Now, we will be taking a closer look at Native American history next week and how westward expansion impacted them. Um, in short, it did not have a positive effect on Native Americans, had a very negative effect on them. Uh, but we'll spend a whole lesson on that next week. But this is where removing Native Americans from their lands really started in earnest with the American government, where the American government really started kicking them out and forcing them to move, even though they had agreements saying that um, they could stay on their lands.